book after Acts is Romans. It's called, they're called epistles or letters. All right? And I'm excited because Romans is tough. It's tough, man. Oh, <clears throat> there's so much. The whole Bible, man, is so good. Like, it's just crazy. It's just crazy when you, um, when your heart actually gets into it, what you get out of it, it's, a, it's insane. It's insane. Like, I don't even read no other books anymore. I'm an avid reader. I've got, I've got seven of these. Literally, the bigger ones. Seven of them, full of books. Full of books. Stop playing. I swear. I'm serious. For real? Yeah. I don't have any shelves or anything to put them on my house now where I live with Rachel now. I've got seven of them full of books. I don't even get them out now. I don't even hardly get them out. Every now and then I'll read a book like that one I bought for you. I'm still on like page 40. I just, you know, it's crazy what the Bible will do. Part your brain, man. You know what I'm saying? So these are the last two chapters of Acts. Um, unlike the last two weeks, I'm going to do it like I have been doing it before. I'm going to call on people to read what they got for 27, and we'll go over that because I separated mine this time. And then I'll call on people for what they got for 28, and then we'll go over that. All right? Who wants to start? 27. I wrote my score list on my homework. And you wrote your score list? And I think I tore it out. So, so now you don't know what you need at the store. Yeah. What are you going to do there? No, I, you, I, Dude, these guys are going to store. I bought the groceries. Oh, I you bought the groceries. I think the homework is on the back of the is not in I'm sorry. Did you buy a book? <laughs> He's buying books on the island of Malta. <laughs> He's being honest, though. Well, I'm going to be on here. I love that, dude. Where's yeah. Paul? It'll be all right, bro. I'm just letting you know. We are all right. Who wants to start? 27. Come on. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out. I think I ain't there. Here it is. Okay, go. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, go. So, uh, I found it's amazing how powerful Paul's words were after going through the storm and then they had to do it without food. Paul boldly stands up and tells them. If they would have listened, they would not have suffered for this. They would have suffered and lost the day. I can imagine whenever he first said that, <laughs> that the, the men that they felt better, you know how whenever somebody said something like that and we can't grab their teeth. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I, I believe, I, I believe Paul did that on purpose so that they would listen to the next word he would have to say. Whenever these men heard that they would survive because God cleaned it out, I can imagine, you know, after after suffering through them things and going through them, and Paul, you know, gets them angry, but he's got their attention, and it tells them how they look, and it tells them how they could survive. And then, and then, how the school helps them play out. Dude, that's, um, that's a perfect portrait of our lives. We learn the hard way. Right? Like, you can't tell me not to do that. I've got to go do it to find out for myself that I shouldn't be doing it. And you're like, dude, I wrote it down for you. I put it on a video tape. Like, I made you a poster that said, don't do this, listen to me. But you did it anyway. It's like, now we're going to listen to this time? You know, like, some people just yeah, go through the pain. don't listen. You know what I mean? Like, literally, it's, uh, and I'm kind I'm, you know, I'm not kind of this way. I am this way. Like, it's, you got to show me, you know? And I remember when I was locked up, I was telling God. I was like, well, here I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm talking to him. You know what I mean? I'm going to try it. I'm trying. You got to show me. Next thing I know, we get tablets in. And they're like, you know, I was still with Jennifer Milliken. She sent oh me God. text messages talking about the same things I'm praying about. God started showing me. Start showing me, bro. And I'm like, oh, I lost it. I lost it. You know? But some of us have to learn the hard way. And when somebody tries to correct you, stop blowing up about it. I mean, it's it's going to, anytime somebody brings correction, it's going to cause friction. You know what I mean? But you have to be open minded in all circumstances. You have to be able to tell whether they're just blowing smoke or whether they're truly care about what, what's getting this and happening. Yeah, I think it's a 
somebody that never knows the Lord, you know, coming coming out of his body. Yep. And then he's seeing something like that where he's like getting ready to deliver it and he's coming to the Before the final symbolic. Before the true personal revelation from God. Dude, I was for five years I was a security guard for Bill Gaither for Christians. Still it. Mercy me, the Gaithers, uh, Toby Mack, for five years. And I'm like, this is just like you said. They would come up to me in the hallway and they'd be like, Do you know Christ? I'm like, Amen. <laughs> for real. I was, like, yeah, I was like, whatever, don't even talk. And I would literally tell people, I don't want them pushing their beliefs down my throat. Name me one true Christian that tries to force you to believe. Because what's the Bible say? Don't let the dust back up here. You don't want to hear what I have to say, though. Nooses. <laughs> I'm kicking it on down the street somewhere. I'm going to talk to somebody else. You know? Right? There ain't, there ain't a true Christian out there that's going to try to force you to do anything. Because if it ain't you that makes that decision, it ain't going to be real. Who else wants to do 27? Okay. Why does Paul go through Rome and everywhere else he goes? Why does he choose to teach the Jews first? Because that's what Jesus said in the Bible. And there is divine order. He said, You will be witnesses to first the Jew and then the Gentile. Uh, I'm curious on why the Lord is wild. message was first revealed to the Jewish people before it was ever revealed to anyone that was non-Jewish. Um, the Jews are God's chosen people to, to make him famous, okay? Through the Jews, God demonstrates his love and holiness. <coughs> there is this adoption of sonship, um, covenant, they've received the law, temple worship, promises. Um, it was through the seed of Abraham that all people on earth are, are to be blessed. And literally 66% of the earth's population is grandfathered by uh, Jesus was born a Jew under under the law, and he fulfilled the Jewish law, and he died once and for all to sacrifice for us. Um, Jesus spoke about being sent to the Jews. He focused his efforts on them. He was the Jewish Messiah. He had come in part to strengthen Judah and to save the tribes of the Jews. Um, he predicted repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in Christ's name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. That's in Luke chapter 24. The, co the gospel of the kingdom was a blessing to the whole world, but it was natural that it would be first proclaimed in Israel. So the entire Bible from start to finish, it's, it's preached to the Jew first. The Jew first. Not that it's not for everyone. Right? But that was just kind of like their, that was their work. You know? Just like, literally, as a man sitting in that chair, your order is God first. When you do get your wife, your woman, woman next. And I don't care if you've got kids, if you've got kids and they're not hers, they come after her. There's a divine order. God, woman, kids, everybody else. There's always a divine order. You know? Jew, Gentile, <laughs> that's everybody. Hey, we got you, bud. <laughs> but, and it's in Romans 1 6 where he says, um, Paul says, it should always be preached to the Jew person. <laughs> More or less, um, it was it was God's divine court. That's why he says that all the time. Acts 1 8, right? You receive power when you get You were, yes, yes, yeah, right? yes, okay. yes, that's it. That's it. Who else wants to be 20? <coughs> <coughs> I got 
you got to, you really got to pay attention to what voices you listen to, right? Don't read what you got. Did you put yours together? That's what, hell yeah. We're good. You have to be stronger than you have to be. We should like we should not need affirmation that we're stronger than our enemy. We shouldn't need it because we're already in a position of victory. Jesus went down there and took the keys to the gates of hell before he ascended. We know exactly what's going to happen in the end. Are you going to sit here and tell me that you believe you believe what I what the book says in Isaiah and what it says in John, but you ain't going to believe the rest of the Bible? It tells you in Revelation we win. We win! Hey, guess what? <laughs> Spoiler alert, you win! <laughs> you know? There should, there, but it happens all the time. Moments of weakness, moments of doubt. You know what I mean? Like, I can't tell you many times I'm sitting there reading that dude and all of a sudden I'm finally, like, I don't know how long it's been. I'm looking up at the ceiling going, there, this ain't even real while I'm reading this. And then I have to stop it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm so that is, do I need to Maybe. <laughs> you know, God tells me the same thing. He'll look down and go, pull it out. At least it's a rubber mallet. <laughs> I'll survive. Okay, go ahead. When the seed was against Paul and the others were sold into the last place, they were in the park. Well, hoping they could save themselves. Paul stopped and fell into the and unless they stayed in the boat at this time, they would not be saved. We can all relate to this. If we were to jump out of the boat now, we may be off course. The consequences could be as we could not be. But if we stay where God has placed us, we will soon see the path He has planned for us. You see, this trip that they found devastating and washed them up with an island. It caused the ministry for us to produce many miracles. Many people were healed and led to Christ. And all the people that were aboard the ship survived. More than high Dude, Paul was tough. I mean, Paul was super tough. So, like, literally, when you look at this right here, you got to think that most likely Paul's either the only Christian or the most mature Christian on that boat. Because ain't nobody else wanting to hear what he has to say, number one. You know what I mean? Like, if they even, if they had the slightest idea of God and Jesus, they would have been like, whoa, 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 what are you trying to say? You know what I mean? As you were speaking, I put like, those guys are putting their own will above God's plan, right? And he's like, if you jump off the boat now, you're going to die. And how many how many times do you sit in that seat and you're like, man, I'm done, I'm done. Every man in here stop that, I guarantee you. I guarantee you, every man sitting in a chair right now is like, dude, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Yep. I'm done right now. Right? Just back, he's fixing to jump off the boat. And he's sitting there telling you, don't jump off the boat, bro. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. We're going to make it. There's a rudder in the back. Fixing to turn. We're going to turn, promise. You know? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. For real. Don't jump off the boat. Don't jump off the boat because you think you can swim the shore. Let God carry you, right? That's good stuff, bro. That is, my dear. We got one, time for one more 27. Come on, Chance. In Acts 27, Paul and the were on their way to Rome. And um, they experienced a storm and ended up uh, being uh, spread. The men who listened to Paul and had kept up with Greek, they would have suffered the loss of their cargo. And, and I got verse 21. When they had gone, Think about that, bro. 
how many times have you had somebody in your life speaking sense? I'm not talking about talking crazy. I'm talking about speaking truth to you. Like, my, man, dude, my mom and dad, they're saints, bro. I can't tell you what I put them through, bro, what I put them through. And they're sitting there talking about, they need to get God in your life. You need to quit that dope. So you're going to be dead or in prison. You need, I mean, talk like, and I didn't want to hear what they had to say. Period. You can't tell me nothing. I got this. It don't control me. It, I don't need it. It needs me. Right? <coughs> it's me. It's right. <laughs> you look up what? Jettison means. To jettison means yeah. to push. push off. To put, let me, I'll give you the real definition. That's the two of version. To jettison something means to get it moving. drop something from a ship. The action of jettisoning something. So, when they jettison stuff, that's what that means. They're lightening their load. So, if a ship's getting ready to wreck, they'll start throwing all the stuff, all the, all, all the cargo on board to make the ship real light. Or, same thing with like an airplane or helicopter. So, so to jettison something, don't mean to push, it means to drop, get rid of it. Lighten your load. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to jettison this. <laughs> not my, not my ding-dongs and my hobos. <laughs> I wake up at like 12, 1, and 4 every morning. <laughs> and I eat a cupcake. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. I told Rachel yesterday. I said, Rachel, we're going to do something. She's like, well, I said, no more snacks. I was like, put some bag of peanuts in there. Something. She's like, she looks at me, I'm like, okay, never mind, bro, these are fine. <laughs> Sweet and salty. <laughs> yeah. God, I bought these guys on the, remember them spiders and hot rocks? Yeah. They got these sticks that are just loaded with cheddar cheese. They're delicious. They're twisted, ain't they? I ate the whole daggum bag. My girl got some ranch, the ranch and uh, they're jalapeno, good, the fire. They're so good, man. So I didn't get a whole, whole lot for 27 and you guys know I'm like really into like the history. Like, to me, it's like this is real. It really happened. You know what I mean? You're you're not reading something that somebody made up. You're reading history. Man. And there's scrolls, 17, 1800 years old, older than the like I don't know. How so they were from the Dead Sea Scrolls or like. So the oldest copy of the Bible that we had was like maybe 600 or 800. The Dead Sea Scrolls were 1,700 years old. So it's that's Old Testament stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you're talking like 1,000 BC, 800 BC. These things are old, man. They've been around that long, and they say the same thing. 90 percent of what you read is what's on the Dagon Scrolls. You hear me? 90% of what you read in your Bible is what is written in Hebrew, Arabic, or, or uh, Greek on the Dagon Scrolls that are that old. For real. I got a question. You know, uh, <laughs> Monday you were talking about they had taken books out of the Bible. Yes, at least what, 14 of them. Why did they do that? Is it that um, they didn't want us to, to know no, what they had written? Some, somebody at some point got the big idea that they were going to have a litmus test. You know, like... Like when you pee in that cup, that piece of paper around the cup, it lights up if something, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, like, that's what I mean. It's like, so they put this Bible, 80 book, however many books, and they gave it this test. And like the book of Maccabees, first and second Maccabees, is about, it's in between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and the Jews revolt, and because they were, um, they were exiled, right? So they revolt and take back their land for like 50 years. There's nothing, I mean, it's, it's history, but there's nothing like, there's yeah, nothing, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying, I don't, I don't want to say that though, man, because at one time it was part of the Bible that they, that they had, you know what I mean? But it, when somebody read it, they're like, we can read this like a Christian book. You know, you go to the book, Christian bookstore and buy, you can read this on the side. It don't need to, this is, this is what 
you need to eat every day. So they, they put this test on there. Catholics, the Pope, his test was a little bit like lighter or easier, so to speak. You know what I mean? Because Maccabees is in there, first and second Maccabees in there, Tobit's in there, the Book of Wisdom's in there, the Book of Judas in there. You know, none of the Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Mary, none of that's in the Catholic Bible. They don't eat him. You can watch videos on it all day long and they try to portray it as, well, Jesus never taught this in the Gospels you read, but he teaches it in this. But then when you read them, it's exactly the same. It is. They try to flip it. Like we were talking about Monday, how people will read something and try to flip it to, to, uh, to like prove what they're saying to be true. You know, that skeptics are doing that all the time. That's the only, that's the only tool they have to try to disprove the Bible. Jesus Christ claimed to be the Messiah. He's been claiming it for 2,000 years and can't nobody discredit him. Period. And nobody else has claimed it. Period. He walked this earth for 30 years. He was a minister for three and a half years. It was 2,000 years ago. We, 34% of the earth's population talks about him today. Every day. One man. Come on, man. You know? The dude's mom gave birth to him. When he died, she was praying to him as her Savior. His mom. There ain't power in that to you guys? There's power in that, right? That would be like me going to Carson Newman and going, drink. Back to my oldest son. You're my savior. You're the Messiah. You're the great white hop we've been waiting on. <laughs> you know? Seriously, think about that. You'd have to be crazy. You'd have to be insane. So were the 12 disciples. So were the 72 that he sent out. So was the 5,000 that come following him around. All the people were crazy. So Paul's trip to Rome begins in the fall of the year 60. So he spends, now you got to remember too, um, that third calendar was given in ours. The month of April would have been January to them. Okay? January was not January to the Jews. April was January to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember exactly who it was that said December twenty fifth, but they had a holiday that was going on at that time in history. They had a big holiday that they celebrated on December twenty fifth, and they just moved Jesus' birth to that day. Somehow it just coincided. I'm pretty sure he wasn't born December twenty fifth on our calendar. Jesus. Yeah. You know? And I watched a video the other day about um, dude was Christian dude was talking about it. He said, uh, and think about this, man. This is crazy. Tim, you'll like this. There should be 13 months of 28 days. That's 364 days. And then Easter as a day of, as a as its own day set apart. 13 months with 28 days. Because and he broke it down the um like September SCP means seven, not nine. October oct means eight, not ten. November means nine, not eleven. Deca is ten. December it's not 12, it's 10. Dude, it was crazy, bro. Crazy how we broke it down. But anyway, so April is the beginning of their year. Uh, March is the end of their year. And he spends the three winter months in Malta. That's where they wrecked, right? So they used three different ships at this time, okay? So it takes him a year to get to Rome. It takes him three different ships. <coughs> when they wrecked on that island and the snake beat him and stuff, they was there three months till another ship come pick them up. Dude, did you imagine? That's great. Paul went through some stuff, didn't he? He went through it, bro. He went through it, man. So they went from Caesarea, Caesarea to Myra on a ship. And then that's when Paul was trying to tell them that <laughs> Don't get on this ship. Don't get on this ship. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to get on the ship right now. They get on it anyway. Um, and it wrecks in the island of Malta. Then finally somebody comes picks them up or whatever. And they go from Malta to, I don't know how to pronounce it, Puteoli. Something like that. And that, like, we talked about this twice. Two, two of you guys brought this up. So two years prior to this, in the year 58, is when God revealed to Paul that he would go to Rome, right? And that he would um, be able to witness there and testify and see in Rome. 
So when all this is going on, he comes to him again, right? He comes to him again and he reassures him. He's like, did I not tell you that you're going to Rome? He's like, yeah. Did you forget? <laughs> you know, but you, take it easy, you're going to make it, right? I do, they do, man. Like I said, when God calls you into something, it or not. <laughs> it's in your best interest to just go with it. You know what I'm saying? How did they know he had wrecked his ship? What? Did they, like, how did they know? I it? don't think, I, like, whatever, I'll have to read it again. Um, hold on just a second. Um, I think what it is is that three months later, a ship just so happened to be sailing by that island. And they were like, they probably drew something real big and fire on the beach or something. You know? I didn't know if they'd send That's a message in a bottle or something. Yeah. <laughs> Except they were Aramaic, so it would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> They don't have any mouths. I don't know what, how they would say that. Let's see. It might be in the first 28 when it talks about that, when they finally get saved right there. I'm still on 27. Hold on. Goodbye, snake. It was three months after the shipwreck that they set sail on another ship that just so happened to pull into that island because it was win they get it was winter time or whatever was going on and they they were they were the smart ones they were like we shouldn't be sailing right now yes yes it was an Alexandrian ship with two twin gods as he figured it you know how most of them most people that own boats put like a statue or something on the front of the road. So it just so it was God. Divine intervention. God will intervene directly in your life. He will. You know what I mean? Most of the time he's making things work and you don't even know they're working. But every now and then he steps down in here and he's like, yeah. <laughs> turns it off. <laughs> every time somebody flushes the deck and pull him on in the shower. <laughs> you can hear me scream. Like blisters me up. I'm like, why does it do that? Any house built before 1990, you don't take a shower and flush the toilet at the same time. Ever. <laughs> you know? I, I don't understand it because the water in the toilet's freezing. <laughs> what, man? It's cold every morning. I'm <laughs> Who wants to do 28? Come on. I'll be with a person in the sun group of South Korea. What sucks itself in this country is how is it? How is it you can randomly show up anywhere, kiss the head down, and you are planning to help with the airport? It seems random, though. Yeah. Like, you you can't you tell me that some of the things in your life have to be <laughs> random. You know? Like, you're bad with it. Yeah. Whatever. Anything, man. And God, God will, especially people, Especially music and people. He will put these things in your life. I'm telling you, bro. He'll put them in your life to bolster you, to strengthen you. You know what I mean? I can even, I can even have that vision. You know, Visions? Yeah. Dude, like, when you, when you let him into your heart, when you walk outside and you, like, you look at a sunset or clouds or a smoke, anything, it looks different to you. It looks it's almost like being a kid. Y'all remember being like eight years old, nine years old, ten years old? Go outside, like everything amazed you. You know what I mean? Then all of a sudden you're 20, 25, 30, and everything's lost its luster. You know? And it's like, they're like, look, a big block. They're like, whatever. Uh, seen a hundred of them. God's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I always think God like hard. When I, when I get outside or, you know, like, especially when the summer comes in, like, yeah. the first of spring, summer, and it gets warm at night, like, you're right. outside, you're like, like, you're 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 like, you're
What are you doing? Did you mean it? How many minutes do you need? All right, go short, man. <laughs> <laughs> I really got this for you. I am. Come on, bro. I love this axe because it showed me following through green, storm, shoot red, and a safe path. We need green and five. We didn't think nothing about it and shoot, we could shake it off. When we go through things, we got to learn to just shake it off and just go in our faith. We need to walk more in faith than inside. Faith will not work to death because he Turn this coat dealer into a hope dealer. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That's amazing, dude. Because that's exactly what he did, right? Then on 28 8, and it happened that the father of the Jesus lay sick of a fear of him. It's ready. Paul went in to him and prayed, and he laid his hand on him and hit him. The same hand as the snake. Yeah. Tell me that. And that same power is in you, bro. That same power is in you. That same power is in you. That same power is in every one of us, man. Shake it off. Shake it off. When you said shake it off, I couldn't wait to see. Hey, this is like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Come on, Chris. I know you know the words. I heard you sing this out yesterday. That's the first shot you're mouth. Get the ukulele out, bud. <laughs> Are you ready? That's right. You're absolutely right, though, man. He went through. Listen, dude. He went through all that. And Galatians, Galatians six nine. That one. That always hits me. Never grow weary of doing what is right, because in due time, what it is that you're sowing, when you're doing what you know to be right, you're sowing seeds. In due time, he doesn't say as soon. He doesn't say when you're ready. No, in due time, when the season comes, you will reap a harvest of everything you put in the ground. And that's what Paul was doing. And before, 14 years prior to, he was killing Christians. Very good. Very good. Killing them. You ain't ready. Chance, go ahead. Next specifically say that he was preaching to them, but if you think about it in 27 leading up to this, he's talking about dude, you should have been listening should have been listening to me. This dumb should have been listening to me. I was telling you back three months ago, well we haven't said set You know? He's like, I'm telling you, God, like and and he wasn't the type of man, he was the type of man to be like, God said, just like the prophets of all. God said, we're gonna live, we're gonna make it. You know what I mean? But they, you got to remember too, like especially the, the people that were already on the island, they probably didn't know nothing about God or Jesus. So when they seen these things happening, they're going, quit to watch out. He quit to watch out. So they call him. You heard what Jim Carrey did? I thought I had another question because I got part of all three whenever it actually did arrive in Rome. And we went in front of uh, Caesar, I just got lost reading it, and then 
All right? And it wasn't until the year 1948 that they became their own standalone nation once again from like the year 50 or whenever it was that they got to 70. Right? That's a long time. It's 1900 years. You know what I'm saying? So they're 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 not always their own like standalone nation, so they're always under control from somebody. They're always under control from somebody. So when the Old Testament talks about the Messiah coming and freeing them and this, that, and the other, they're thinking, sweet. When he gets here, he's going to be riding a big old camel with a daggum spear the size of Goliath. That's literally what they thought. Like you take Judas, for instance. Judas will not betray Jesus. Over and over and over again, Judas was the only one not from Galilee. Does everybody know that? Every, out of the 12 disciples, 11 of them were from Galilee. Judas was not. Not that that means anything, but it's kind of cool. Anyway. Where was he from? I can't remember. I have to look it up. Um, but he lied. <coughs> Literally, over and over and over again, he's like, why ain't we fight? Why ain't we fight? Why ain't we freeing ourselves? Why ain't we freeing ourselves? And when they said, dude, this is the Messiah. This is the Son of God. He could call up to heaven, and his father would send 70,000 angels to his rescue. What did Judas do? <laughs> Get him in the garden. <laughs> you guys grab him. Right? And he killed himself afterwards. Because guess what? Jesus was serious about being a humble servant. He didn't call up to heaven and bring 70,000 angels down. He said, I'm going to die for your sins. I'm giving my life for yours. I'm not here to take their lives. I'm here to give life, salvation to everybody. Judas had it backwards. Right? Okay. Acts 28. So Paul was in Rome for at least two years. He was a prisoner, but he lived in his own rented house. He could freely teach about Jesus. He could have people over for dinner. He could throw bonfires, parties, bring your own snakes, bring your own snake barbecue. I don't think he's changed. No. I, when he was in that house, I don't think so. I, I'm pretty sure it probably had guards around it. Yeah. If you think about it, dude, they, they sent, I don't even remember now, 80? Yeah. No, I'm talking about the tomb. They sent like 80 guards to guard the tomb of a dead guy. Well, like he's dead, put 80 people there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he still rolled the rock away and got out. I'm just saying, that's how that's how the Romans work. Dude. They they were like America is today. They were military. They were militants. You know? They sent 200 people to Jesus. They sent, um, whenever they come and went and got Paul, what was it, 200, 400, like almost 500 different soldiers of different various cavalries or whatever to take Paul out of there before they killed Paul. So they didn't play with numbers, right? They didn't play. So that house was probably, there was probably 200 soldiers right that house. And their houses were tiny, bro. Like literally this was probably the size of the whole house. You know? On the ship at Rex? Did it say? I think it did. I'm not sure. I don't know that it numbered them. Oh. You don't care. Look it up. He was freely allowed to teach. They gave him, he was a Roman citizen. You know what I mean? And he hadn't been convicted of a crime. And he made bail. He was a Roman citizen. He was on bond. <laughs> he was out on bond. Jews a race or religion? It's a race. It's an ethnicity. Okay, so the Jewish people became Christian and, and Jew, Jewish people practice the religion Judaism. Right. But, but they Jewish. convert to Christianity. You can convert to Judaism and that make you Jewish. No. No, because you don't have brown hair and big nose. Oh, oh, they really I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just no, no. And that, that's one of the biggest problems in the Bible is that people are like, you're not a Jew. You're not a Jew. 
Uh, you you got to do everything we do. If you want to be yeah. part of us, you got to do whatever thing we do. You got to convert to Jew, right? But Jesus is like, no, you don't have to be a Jew. Salvation is for everybody. Well, they on what? No, Jews based whether you're a Jew on your on your ethnicity. Okay. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, they they. I mean, Jesus tolerated. When Abraham was going through after after God gave his covenant, he was walking through. He gave him circumcision to become a Jew. You just have to be circumcised. Right, but you still wasn't a Jew. You were called. They called it something else. They called it proselyte. It's called a proselyte in the Bible. They're, they're not a Jew. <coughs> That's how you convert it to like their slaves, everybody. They still you still weren't ethnically a Jew. A person who has converted from one opinion or religion or party to another. A new convert to induce someone or to convert someone, to recruit someone to your party, your institution, or your cause. Especially if it has something to do with faith or a cause. So, like, what they were saying was they didn't think God was for you unless you were a Jew. And to become a Jew, you had to be circumcised, follow all their laws, and eat the things that they ate. Like, you, you literally had to do everything they did, right? They considered you then part of the Jewish nation, but you were not DNA, blood. You were not a Jew inside your body. You're still a white dude. They just consider you a Jew, right? No, because they were exiled so many times that there was Jews born in Egypt. There was Jews. It, literally, it's your DNA. Like you're white because your mom and dad was white. You're or whatever. You know what I mean? What? Spanish. <laughs> or <laughs> what do you mean? What can't be a bloodline? Yes, it is. That's why it is. That's why you Jewish. Yeah. It, it's it's a it's an ethnicity, just like Asian, just like African, just like Russian or European. Yes, it's a blood. It's it's a it's a in South Africa. It is, it is. It's an ethnicity. I promise you, it's an ethnicity. It's not a. a it's not a religion because the name of their religion is Judaism. That what happened was, and God told them this, God tells them this, He says, go into this land and you better eradicate everything in there. And they did. There's still Canaanites, Hittites, Herbicides, Amorites, all kinds of different kind of people in there, and they did start having kids with them. You know what I mean? And so those kids are what they call Samaritans or half Jews or whatever. I no, I, I no. Uh, so they're it, it's just like it's it's just like any kind of mixed race children. They're still white children that had white mom and dads. They're still black children that had black mom and dads. They're still Jewish children that had Jewish mom and dads. They're still Indians uh, from the country India that you know what I mean. That weren't mixed. They're, they're having children of their own ethnicity, of their own bloodline. So, so Jews are or Jewish are a group or a nation originating from the Israelites and or the Hebrews of historical Israel and Judah. Jewish ethnicity or nationhood and Judaism as a religion are strongly interrelated and as Judaism is the ethnic religion of the Jewish people. That's Wikipedia. 
They are, they, they are a race of people. You ever played uh, Morrowind, Oblivion? You play video games at all? Like, you get to choose your race? Oblivion, cool Skyrim. <laughs> Skyrim? You get to kill them dragons and then dig through their bones for things? <laughs> what? It can be elfish, elfin, whatever they call them. Dark elves. The dark elves. See, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Y'all ever play Final Fantasy? You can be a white wizard, you can be a dark wizard, you can be a warrior, you can be a thief. <laughs> so, um, there were already Christians in Rome, and we know this because Paul actually wrote the book or the letter to the Romans three years before he ever got there. So there's already Christians established in Rome. Um, in Rome, alright? <laughs> Never be my life. While in Rome, Paul writes Ephesians. So he's in that house for two years. Gave him plenty of opportunity, right? Like if you was locked up and you got this is what happened to me, and you became a Christian while you was locked up, you had plenty of time to mature to seriously to get to know God, right? So in that two years, he writes Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. Wow. You know? So this was, okay, so they left in the year 60. A year later, or 10 months later, in the year 61, they get to Rome. Um, somewhere in towards the end of the year 62, Paul is finally acquitted. Not guilty. <laughs> you know, it's very possible that Paul at this time makes a fourth missionary journey. You guys have heard me talk about how he most likely had four journeys, not three. A fourth missionary journey to Spain, Greece, and Asia, Asia Minor. It would have been in between the years 63, because he got let loose right at the end of 62. 63 and 67. Right? So, and also in this time, between the years 63 and 67, he writes Timothy and Titus. Once again, in the year 67, he is arrested, taken back to Rome. Every time he said, right? Let's talk about it. A possible mm. fourth mission. Mm. 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 That's the start of the show. Unless they're counting, unless they're counting his, his time in prison as a missionary journey, or maybe, I don't know. I'd have to, is there any commentary on that? So um, he's beheaded. They cut his head off. Paul, okay, so you had Jesus. Jesus, his ministry lasted three and a half years. He was the most <coughs> prolific, profound, influential human being ever walked the planet, right? Three and a half years of ministry. Um, all the disciples died pretty daggum early, except for John, who lived to be 7,000 years old. Um, Paul's ministry lasted 30 years. This, the first 30 years of his life, he killed Christians or hated Christians or, or was, a, was a Pharisee or a practicer of Judaism. The last 30 years of his life, he devoted it to Christ. And again and again, he was beaten, flogged, imprisoned, stoned, and driven from city to city. His suffering was almost unbelievable. He almost died four times. I think, at least four times. Like they beat him to where he think was like, oh, he's dead. He, you know? he was responsible for bringing thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people to us. God used a man that persecuted his people to bring thousands upon thousands of people to Christ. Tell me that what you did was too bad for anything to become. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, man. Like, he tries to prove him wrong. Yeah, That's where they're going to Rome. It's technically yeah, not a missionary journey because he's in prison, but he's going to Rome. But they allowed him to teach about Jesus. That's why it says that. Okay, so according to your Bible, it would have been a different From the year 63 to the year 63. A separate one. Another one. Yep, another one. Which would, that would be awesome. You know what I'm saying? Love you guys. Love you too, Amen. Who wants to praise out?